flat ring mechanic here again and today we're going to be going over how to properly do an automotive solder joint that is weather tight and that's going to last this is everything we're going to be using in the video um, as always i'll leave links to this this stuff in the video description below um, this is going to be kind of a quick to the point we're going to keep a lot of the nonsense and common sense stuff out of this video so if that's kind of stuff you like uh Appreciate it if you subscribe to the Flat Rate Mechanic and hit that like button. But today we're going to be using uh, butane soldering iron. Um, I prefer this over the other ones. I've tried a couple other brands and I particularly prefer this one. It heats up nice, melts the solder really good. Um, we got a heat gun here for uh, doing the heat shrink. Uh, you could also use a torch for the heat shrink. Um, depending on uh, how much space there is or the application I'm using, uh, you have an option between the heat gun or the torch. But uh, let's go ahead and get right into this, guys. All right, so first let's decide how we're going to connect um, our joint before we solder it. And the first is going to be just a mesh type of joint where you're just going to mesh them together and you're going to twist them. Like so. And this will be probably, a little, this is going to be a little more tricky when you're actually in the vehicle. But, um, so a mesh joint like that. And anytime, anytime you're making these joints, always want to make sure that you don't have any protruding um, edges that are sticking out along here. Um, our second type of joint is going to be a Lyman's joint, they call it. This is where you're actually going to twist the wire around the outside, like so. Which isn't a bad option either. Um, a lot of times I don't like I don't prefer using this method only because a lot of times you're stuck with the wire strands sticking out and if you're using a thicker wire that can really be an issue because when you um, put the sh shrink wrap it's gonna appear as the shrink wrap so um, I usually don't use this tight but in if you're in a really tight spot or a tight application where you can't get out the wiring very well um, sometimes you aren't able to do a mesh joint like this only because um, of the difficulty a mesh joint usually is a little harder to get the wires to stay together and then our third option is going to be what they call hook joint and i always like to spin these tight before i do it then what we're going to do is we're just going to make a hook just like it says and we're going to twist them hook it like this and twist now very rarely um, do I use this type of joint but it definitely wouldn't be a bad idea to use this if you're using it on um, say uh, a connector that's going to be used repeatedly um, like if you're plugging or unplugging it a lot of amount of times and you, you might may get some tugging um, this is going to be a very strong connection that you don't have to worry about getting pulled apart so if it's going to be an actively moving wire um, this hook joint is uh, a, that'd be a good application for this okay as you can see we got our wire all set up here and um, I went ahead and took some flux here some flux paste and um, I went ahead and put it on the wire. It's just going to help that solder pull into the wire is much better. Always a good idea to use some extra of that. And we're going to go ahead and tin the tip of this. Um, usually I like to put a little bit of the flux on the tip as well. Like so. And um, we're going to go ahead and get this thing heated up. And you'll see how fast this heats up. It does much better than a lot of the ones I've seen in the past. Let's see there. get it to focus very well yeah you see it's already already melting solder so very quick also be sure not to not to breathe the soldering fumes <coughs> so then we're gonna go ahead and wipe this off on the wet sponge And you can see we got a nice shiny surface there so our tip is all nice and tin that's just going to make for a nice clean solder joint it gets all the oxides off of there 
And then the main thing you're going to want to do with soldering, rather than melting the solder on the top and dripping it down into the wire, like this, um, you're going to want to heat the wire itself up until the actual solder melts into the joint. And then just feed it in and the actual rest will do it. All the rest will do it all by itself. And that's what where the flux comes in handy. And that is how you want your solder joints to look. Now we're going to go ahead and seal this up and I'll show you a couple little tricks. Alright, so to make sure we have a nice seal on this, um, I have our heat shrink around the outside. But we're also going to take it a step further and we're going to apply some dielectric grease. Now a lot of these heat shrinks here, um, you'll have to check when you're pur purchasing it, um, come with a glue or a sealant inside that will actually heat and seal when you shrink it. But I still always like to use um, some dielectric grease on it as well. You're just going to do it, put it over the solder joint. And then um, we're going to go ahead and shrink this. Now you can use your torch to sh shrink it. Um, you can use a heat gun to shrink it. But I am actually going to use my sire soldering iron adapter. Uh, as you can see right here to shrink this. Alright, so we got it all heated up here, and you can see the dielectric grease is now starting to come out the ends. And we have ourselves a nice, tight, weatherproof solder joint that is going to last, hopefully, the lifetime of the vehicle. I would recommend using a little more heat shrink. You can see we're a little short on the edges here, so you definitely want to come back. Um, about the half the length of your solder joint past past the insulation and we also have these little butt connectors that you can crimp or solder most people typically crimp these um, but these can make for a very nice secure automotive uh, weather tight solder joint all right so i'm going to go ahead and speed the video up here while i solder the rest of these three solder joints and at the end I'll show you how not to solder. Alright, so here is how a lot of people attempt to solder and um, is the incorrect way to solder. Uh, first off, we don't have any flux on the wiring, so it's not going to suck the solder in properly. What a lot of people will try and do is they'll try and, melt the, try and melt the solder on the tip of the soldering iron. And then they kind of dab it on there. And see, I'm actually... I'm actually having a hard time get, even getting the solder to stick to the wire because there's uh, there's no flux on there. So let's go ahead and put some flux on there. 
The flux also helps with uh, the heat transfer a little bit. So now we'll, we can at least get it to stick on there, but it's not going to um, suck into the wire quite like it shouldn't. So there is how you should not do a solder joint. And as you can see on this, we also have some uh, protruding wires. And when it was stripped, it looks like one of the wires was also um, damaged as well. So this is what you want to try and avoid. And to avoid this, all you have to do is um, heat up from underneath with a good amount of flux. All right, guys, so here's all the approved solder joints we used in the video. I hope, I hope this was helpful, and as always, the products I used will be in the video description below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the Flat Rate Mechanic.